Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series, we're creating a calendar inside of our Django and React application by using full calendar. This is not the first video in this series. We've already done one before in which we've completed the initial setup and provided a very basic example. So if you've not watched that video and you want to follow along with this one, I highly recommend you watch that first. In this video, we're going to continue and we're going to enable different kinds of views in our calendar. And we're going to make sure that the users can use buttons in the calendar to switch to different views. And in this video, we actually are going to cover all of the views that are going to be available for free. We're going to start with the options for the day grid view. Next, I'm going to show you how we can add some buttons on the top of our calendar so that we can switch between the different views. Then we're going to continue and we're going to be looking at all of the other different views that are available, which are a time grid view. So you can see your calendar with the hours on the left hand side, a list view, which shows all of your appointments in a list and also the ability to see multiple months using the multi month view. As a last step, I'm also going to show you how you can create your own custom view so you can use any of the views we've discussed previously and alter them for your exact specification. Now, before I started the recording of this video, I've already made a very small change to my code. I just copied over everything that we did in the last video so that we have a fresh page for the changes that we're going to be working on in this video. So we're going to start off in the full calendar documentation because the first thing that we want to check out is the options for the different views that full calendar has to offer. So if we go to fullcalendar.io and we go to the docs, you can see that we can have information about various different topics, but if you scroll all the way down, it shows you the information on the different views that you can use. And you can see that we have a month view, a time grid view, a list view, a day grid view, and a multi-month view, which is this one. And then there also are a few premium ones that we will not cover in this video. Now, the first one that we're going to take a look at is the day grid view. And this will allow you to present your calendar in a few different ways. And you can see right here that the day grid view uh, displays one or more cells, each representing a day. So this is going to divide your calendar in different days. But even within there, you have the options to split that in a singular day, in a week, in a month, or even in a year. So there are different options that you can pick for the day grid view. And you can see right now in our code that we have uh, used the day grid plugin. So we can use all of the options of the day grid, but our initial view is currently the day grid month. And if we take a look in our front end, you can indeed see that currently we are displaying different days over the period of a month. But you can change this and, for example, make this day grid day. And if we now save it and look inside of our front end, you will see that it still displays it in blocks of days, but it only shows per day. So now we have a view for each day. And we can change this quite easily because we also can say that we want to have day grid week. And if we now go back to our front end, you can see that we still have blocks of a day, but it shows one week. Now, month we've already shown before, but if we change this to day grid year, I can save it again. And now it is going to show you blocks per day, but it's going to span across multiple months. So we can go all the way from January and scroll down all the way until we end up at December. So these are the different ways that you can present your calendar uh, with each block representing one day. Now, of course, you want your users to be able to switch between different uh, views. And to enable that, Full Calendar has added buttons on the top that you can initialize inside of your project. So we're going to be doing just that. So inside our calendar, we can actually add a prop that is going to allow us to define the buttons that we want to see. And that is called header toolbar. And we say an is sign and then do two times the squarely brackets. And in there, we can define a few things. Now, the first thing that I want to define is actually the things that I want to see in the buttons. Uh, and I can do that by specifying right, because I want to put that on the right. And in there, I can specify that I want to see buttons for day, grid, week, then also day, 
grid month and perhaps I also want to see day grid year like this. And let's save this and see what happens. And when we now take a look at our front end, you can see that we have different buttons to display different views. So if I click on week, it will show me the week view. If I click on the month, it will show me the entire month. And if I click on year, it will go even further and display the entire year. However, what you will notice opposed to our calendar in our previous video is that we've now lost the buttons to navigate to different months. Uh, and we can easily make them appear again by changing the header toolbar slightly. And we can do that by specifying something called left. And in there, we can state that we want to see pref from previous and also next. And then we end that with a comma. And this is going to make sure that the buttons for previous and next are going to be on the left hand side of the toolbar. And when we now return, you can indeed see that we can switch between the different views and we can go forward and backwards with the previous buttons, but we've now lost the title in the center. So to make sure that that is also present, we can go and do center and in there specify that we want to see title. And that is going to make sure that we see the actual time period that it is about. And right now you can see that we see it in the middle. And if I go to week, it will show the correct dates for the week. And we can go as far as we would like. Day grid view is not the only thing that exists for full calendar. Another option that we can see right here is the time grid view. And this is actually going to make sure that on the left hand side, you don't see a day, but you actually see all of the hours in the day, which is very beneficial if you really want to see the times of your appointments instead of just multiple appointments in a single day. So this is going to provide you with more details. Now to actually use this time grid view, we need to make an install because we need full calendar slash time grid. And for the day grid plugin, we actually did not need that because we already installed it in the previous video. So for now, I'm going to stop my front end server and I'm going to do npm install. And then we do add full calendar slash time grid. And we'll give it some time to install. And the install is now ready. So the next thing that we can then do is also make that import. So we can do import time grid plugin. And that is going to be from add full calendar slash time grid like this. And now we can also add this particular plugin inside of the plugins in the top so that we can now use all of the different options from time grid plugin. And similarly as before, there are a few different options that we can use. And the most notable options are the time grid day and the time grid week. So I'm just going to change our initial view now to time grid day. And then I'm also going to replace our day grid week button with the time grid day button. And let's save this and see what our view looks like. And to do that, we also need to start our server by doing npm run dev. And when we now take a look at our calendar, you can see that it displays a single day in blocks of hours. So now we can display our appointments in more detail. And in the documentation, there are also different props that can restrict the hours that you want to show because for example when you are working it doesn't really make sense to start this from 12 a.m perhaps you only want to see it from 8 until 6 or some other range that is relevant for you now what we can also do is change this to time grid week and let's also do that for the button and if we now save it and go to our front end, we will see that it now has the time on the left hand side, but it shows the entire week inside of this view. So this already gives us a little bit more information. And I believe for the time grid, those are actually the only two views that are really allowed. Um, and that's also logical because if you display more than a week, it would not really look that nice for the user. Now, if we go to the documentation and we go back to the views again, you will notice that there are even more options. And one of that is the list view. And the list view can be presented as list day, list week, list month, and list year. And we again need an install to complete it. So let's go to our terminal and do 
npm install at full calendar slash list. So that install is now also complete and we can then import it again by doing import list plugin. And that is going to be from at full calendar slash list. Now remember in here we have four options again. So the first one is the list day, which is going to show you a list of the day. And let's also make that the button. And actually we also need to add it right here. So we need to add list plugin to our plugins list so that we can actually use it inside of our calendar. And if we now check out the list per day, you can see that it goes to the relevant day and it shows you all of the items that are in a list. Now, for some days we don't have any, so for me, this view is not really that relevant. And we can also change this to a list week, which is then going to do the same thing, but in week format, which will look like this. And we can also extend it even further by making a list of the month, which will look something like this in my case. And if you want to go really crazy, you can also do a list year with all of the different appointments per year, which will look like this for me, which is actually the same. Uh, but you can imagine if you have a lot of events and you show it per year, it is not going to be that efficient. Now, there's also another way to take a look at your events, and that's actually displaying multiple months. And you can do that by using the multi-month grid. And this will allow you to show multiple months inside of your calendar underneath each other so that you are able to see your calendar on a little bit more of a high level. And again, here we need to do an install for at full calendar slash multi-month. So we're going to go back again and stop our server and do npm install at full calendar slash multi-month. And now we can also add that as an import. So we can import multi-month plugin from at full calendar slash multi-month. And then we can add the multi-month plugin to our plugin list. And we can state that we want to see multi-month year. Because I think that's actually the only view that will be available for multi-month. So let's start our server and see what that looks like. And in our front end, we can now see that we see all of the months of the year as a small calendar on our homepage, which can actually be quite nice uh, if you don't have that much events. Uh, and of course, there are also a lot of different ways to customize this. For example, you can make sure that you only see one calendar uh, right here and that you can just infinitely scroll down with that. So there are a lot of different props that you can use to make sure that it suits your style. And of course, the same goes for these buttons, because actually, if we summarize it right here, we know that we can pick day, grid, day, day, grid, week, day, grid, month, and also day, grid, year. So those are all the options for the day grid. Then next to that, we can also pick time, grid, day, and time for it week. Then as for the lists, we have the list day, list week, list month, and also the list year. And then the last option that we also have is multi month year. And within all of these, there are also plenty of ways to customize them separately. So in this case, it's critical to listen to your users and just put in the most relevant things inside of your buttons. Because also if you add too much buttons, it will just become a mess and it will become undoable. So what I'm going to pick for my particular use case is I'm going to pick day grid month, which is just going to show us a nice uh, overview of the whole month. Uh, and that's also going to be my initial view. Then I want to give my users the opportunity to also see a time grid over the week. So that's going to be my second button. Then I'm going to also allow them to see a list of a certain day to go into even more details. And in this case, I'm also going to show the option of multi-month year, just to provide a very high level overview. And if you would do something like that, this is what it would look like. So we can go from month to a week view, to a list view of a day, and then to an entire year. 
Now, you might wonder for our option that we have right here, which is called year, how do we actually customize this? Because our multi-month year now shows the entire year. So it's gonna span over 12 months. But maybe for my particular use case, I only want to see the next three months. How can I create a custom view to make sure that I can fulfill my user's requirements? Well, actually you can do that quite easily inside of your code because you can define your own views. So if I create a new option right here called views, and I do is, and again, do the double square brackets, I'm able to create my own view. So let's say that I want to create a view that shows three months. So I'm going to call it multi-month free. Then I can do a colon and some squarely brackets and in here define what my view should look like. So I can say that the type of my view is going to be multi-month because we want to do something similar as the multi-month plugin, but we just want to customize it a little bit so it's um, more suitable for our users. Then after the type, I can also specify a duration. And in there, I can state that months can be equal to three. And this will make sure that it displays three months. Next, we also can define the title format. And that is going to enable us to show what the title looks like inside of the center. And in there, I can say that I want to see the month in short. And that I also want to see the year in numeric. So that way I would see the short for the month and then the numeric in the title to make sure that we actually know what we're looking at. Then we can also say our column header format. So what are the column headers actually going to look like? And in there I can say that I want to have a weekday and I want to have the short naming of the weekday. And just like this, I have defined my own view called multi-month free, which should only display three months. Now, um, I've now put in these additional options, but I'm sure there are many more things that you can customize to really make it look like the thing that you want. So what I can do right now is actually use this view inside of my buttons, because I can say that I want to have not multi-month year, but I want to have multi-month free as my view. And now let's see what happens in our front end. So you can see if we now load it that we have a button and it's called multi-month free. So if I now click on this one, you can see that this overview will only display three different months. And by doing this kind of thing, you can actually be really specific in what you want the user to see. Now, if I don't want to display multi-month free as the button text, there's actually a prop for that as well. So we can go to our view and I can say that button text can be equal to three months. And now if we save it and go back to the front end, it actually displays the text that we want to see. So now I can switch between the list, the week, the month, and then my three months. And that's how you can easily use the different views within full calendar and also create your own custom views. This was actually all for this video. In the next video, we're going to continue and we're going to pass some data from our Django backend to our React.js frontend and actually use that inside of our calendar. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.